from Upper Michigan Source. This is your Friday Night Fever on the Band for February 7th. I'm Mike Ludlum. Michigan Tech is celebrating its 98th Winter Carnival, and that means home hockey for the Huskies. They're entertaining Lake Superior State this year. Damon Witten, the Lakers coach, used to be an assistant at Michigan Tech. So let's go to the McGinnis Student Ice Arena first period. A little bit of trouble for the Lakers behind the net. And the next thing you know, Alex Bretzman has his 13th goal of the year at 538 and 1-0 Tech lead. Less than two minutes later, though, Yuri Miura to Brendan McKay. And he's on the board with his first of the season, tied at one. Then Ashton Calder would score to make it 2-1. That was shorthanded. Max Humitz. We'll get the goal from William Riedel to make it 3-1. Move to the second period. Colin Swoyer with his second from Trenton Bliss and Seamus Donahue. Huskies back within 3-2. But Mr. Calder is at it again for his eighth. And Tech was changing goaltenders eventually. That's Miroslav Mucha that made it 5-2. Logan Pietela scored his seventh to bring Tech within 5-3. But the Lakers made the last two goals of the game and they went on to win 7-3, two-game total goal series. Michigan Tech has never come back from more than a two-goal deficit at Winter Carnival. To the scoreboard, where strange things happen, the same score at Minnesota State. Wildcats lose 7-3. Griffin Lochran, Garrett Klee, and Phil Ballou with the goals for the Wildcats. Elsewhere in the WCHA, Bowling Green defeats Alaska Anchorage 5-4 in overtime. Alaska and Alabama Huntsville play to a tie at six. Alaska gets the extra point. And Finlandia's teams, well, they both had the same score. They're on the wrong end of it, though. Men lost at home 3-1. to one. Women lost on the road 3-1 to the Saints. High school hockey, the Gaylor Blue Devils making their first trip to Escanaba in four years. Scoreless late in the first. Kyle Crutina gives it to Ethan Silverstone, and he roofs it. And he scored again 28 seconds later, 2-0 Eskimos after one. Move to the second, Gunnar Bordeaux will make it 3-0. He's actually going to score the goal from the blue line coming up here. One of those uh, whiplash kind of plays, and that one scored. Gaylord scored twice, but they could not catch up. Escanaba the winner by the count of 3-2. Elsewhere in high school hockey, the three Copper Country teams, or three of the Copper Country teams downstate for the big showcase tournament. Peter Anderson had two goals and Brandon Pievla 23 saves. Hancock defeated Utica Eisenhower 3-2. Scott Locus, the only goal for Calumet. Livonia Stevenson's really good. No shame in losing to them 3-1. Alex Studebaker, 26 saves for the Copper Kings. And Gabriel Richard edged Houghton 2-1 and not involved in that tournament. Traverse City West defeated Sault Ste. Marie by the score of 5-2. And the Red Wings lost to Columbus. That score was 2-0. We now turn to boys high school basketball. And we also turn back the clock about 20 years. Almost not quite. You might remember that Nagani won a boys state basketball championship in Class C back in the year 2000. And almost all that team with Billy Hill throwing the ball up in celebration. So they reunited Friday night at Lakeview Memorial Gym. Everybody, like I said, almost everybody was there. The cheerleaders, the coaches honored. Say hello to Billy Hill, one of the top players of the team in that season, not to mention Louis Koski. Each player from that team was escorted onto the court by a current member of the squad. Head coach Tom Russo was not able to be there, but there he is holding the trophy. They did write, read a prepared statement. This is the first time the whole team has been together since they were in high school, and for them, gathering again has brought back memories from their season. Very nostalgic, because we get to commemorate an achievement that we as a team succeeded at doing. The best part has been able to share in the memories that maybe some of us have forgotten, but in bringing everyone together, it's allowed for us to recall some of those memories with a little more clarity. Yeah, that halftime basket was certainly one worth remembering. Now, the model towners of Gwyn were in town to take on Nagani, and Tristan Jancy would get the ball up and in for the model towners to get things going. 
Nagani gets on the board as Chaz Kumpala will, well, he didn't want to shoot it, but he had no choice when you were in midair. That made it 4-2 and the foul. A few plays later, Jackson Sager, Jason Waterman. I don't think that touched rim either. Miners up 15-12. Second quarter for Gwen, Caleb Anderson. Very nice pass to Reed Hill, and that's an easy layup. Back the other way, Kumpala will miss, but Jackson Sager is there for the putback. He had 21, and Nagani goes on to win this one by the count of 71 to 48. Also in boys basketball, the Menominee Maroons, well, at least when you're in Menominee, you always have to travel north to play Upper Peninsula teams, and the Maroons did that Friday night against the Marquette Redmen. Say hello to Menominee coach Sam Larson. He's getting ready for the third quarter, but his Maroons trail 34-22. For Marquette, Cam Carp to Ty Lotterman, gently off the window, 36-22 Marquette. Keegan Monroe will hit the short shot here, but Monroe was limited to just five points by Marquette's defense. Then for the Redmen, off this miss, it'll be a fast break. Cam Carp ahead to John Thompson for the easy layup, despite the slam off the backboard. Thompson's going to get another hoop. Carp led Marquette with 17 points. They went on to win 75-43. to It was 23-4 to in that decisive third quarter. Let's go to Westwood where the Manistique Emeralds were visiting the Patriots. Pick it up in the fourth quarter. Perimeter passing by the Patriots would lead to a drive, a jump stop, and a hoop from Ty Alderton. And the Patriots were up by more than 20. Stephen Kangas right there with the knockaway. Mason Mariuzza gets the ball ahead to Kangas for the layup. Good teamwork there. Then Marcus Bowes to Aiden Arsenal for three. And the crowd was thrilled, not to mention the student section. For the Emeralds, Sammy Warren to Nathan DeChow. He fights his way to the basket and banks it in. Westwood, though, the easy winner, 57 to 31. Check on some numbers. Foster Wonders had 32. Marcus Johnson had 20. And Iron Mountain defeated Ishpeming 82 to 50. Escanaba, nine better than Kingsford, 65 to 56. North Dickinson, a big win on the road over Barker River Harris, 53-48. North Central takes care of Forest Park, 52-43. Ontonagon, a bucket better than Wakefield Marinisco, 58-56. Jack Matrella and Lane Quartermeyer combined for 44 points. Bess Murr defeated Snakebit Lakeland and Hubble, 69-43. Caleb Gregory at 23 for the Lakes. Ironwood falls at home to Drummond, Wisconsin, 62-57. The ETC Panthers keep going 67-50 over the Jeffers Jets. Back to basketball, go to Berga County. That's Dollar Bay right there, the number one team in the small school will pull. Berga right there. And it didn't take long for Davin Hill to go up and in for the layup. Next, Hill will find Connor LeClaire. And that one goes in just as easily. The other way now for the Vikings, Presley Rassen in with a quick pass to Zach Sackett. He drops it in the bucket. Blue Bolts, Hill again, moving inside. And that one floats in gently. He had 22 on the night. For the Vikings, steal Jandro. No. Davin Hill chucks it down court. Nashton Janke's going to be there for the deuce. He ended up with 33 on the night. And Dollar Bay just keeps right on rolling, 88 to 50. Hop in the car, let's go to Lance, where the Purple Hornets were taking on the Hancock Bulldogs. Bulldogs with an eight-point lead in the second quarter. And Carson Chenoweth gets the hoop and the harm for the three-point play. The other way now, Alex Kissel to Dyshawn Allen. And a nice off authentic-looking drive for the hoop. Moments later, Terry Reed will score off the loose ball. Back the other way for the Bulldogs. Chenoweth in the corner to J.D. Sevis. And nice looking three. He had 25 on the night. Chenoweth ended up with 35. And Hancock gets the victory 77 to 63. Back to the numbers. Chassel 69. Republic Michigami 48. Logan Perolini's 23. Helped Norway get past Stevenson 78-51. 
Mid Pen, four better than Carney Nato, 5147. Angadine tiptoes past Superior Central by four, 5349. It was Rudyard over Newberry, 6341. Maplewood Baptist, 11 better than Beaver Island, 57 to 46. On the girls' side, Maplewood Baptist defeated the Islanders, 62 31. In makeup basketball, it was Chassel 56, Lakeland and Hubble 24. Calumet defeated Gwynn, 62 51. Florence, game scheduled actually for Friday night, had no trouble with White Lake, 55 13. And at Grand Marais Homecoming, the Polar Bears beat Copper Country Christian, 52-39. By the way, the Pistons lost to Oklahoma City, 108-101.